Staying with that humanitarian crisis fast unravelling in Syria. As ever, it's the local civilians who are caught in the crossfire, many of them fleeing their war-torn country in cars and on foot, with few possessions on their backs. Now, Save the Children, meanwhile, has been warning of a mass displacement of children. For more, let's cross to Joël Basoul, the NGO's Middle East and Eastern Europe media manager. She joins us from Beirut. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. Can you talk us through these troubling reports, how children specifically are uh, impacted by this conflict? So it's been since six days now that the Turkish military operation in northeast Syria has started. So far, 70,000 children have been displaced. This number is very high given that we're in the middle of the school year. Children were feeling safe in that area, going to school, leading normal lives to a certain extent, obviously. And now they're having to be on the move again. Many of them had already been displaced from other parts of Syria throughout eight years of war, and they're living another displacement. So in addition to the physical impact this has on them, it will have also a long-lasting uh, psychosocial uh, impact on those children. Of course, many of them will be traumatized for years to come. Now, uh, there are also reports of innocent French, Australian children, the children of ISIS fighters who've uh, been trapped, and there are calls for their repatriation. Uh, yes, so Northeast Syria is home to uh, three million people, uh, the majority of whom are Syrians. But uh, there are three camps which host uh, foreigners from different nationalities, more than 40 nationalities, uh, the majority of whom are women and children. Um, uh, one of the camps is now empty of its uh, foreign uh, residents because they just left the camp. When the guards went away, um, they left the camp. Um, uh, some of the children have been relocated elsewhere to another camp, but the majority uh, of those foreign children and women remain in two other camps. Al Hol and Roj. And uh, we are calling as Save the Children on their governments to take them back to their countries of origin uh, before the situation becomes completely unmanageable and the access to these uh, children becomes impossible. And of course, the media is paying a lot of attention to this story. Do you think it would be accurate to say that somehow it appears that the lives of foreign children are valued more so than the locals? Because after all, we are seeing also a plethora of video footage of. Kurdish children pleading with the world to stop this war? Uh, no, of course not. All children are equal. First and foremost, they are the victims of the, this war, whether they're Syrians, Iraqis, there are many Iraqis also in, in northeast Syria, um, or from other nationalities, they are the victims of a conflict they did not choose to be part of. Um, uh, Kurdish children, Syrian children have uh, uh, fell. Um, casualties to, to the latest uh, escalation. Um, there are reports of um, uh, four children being killed, many more being injured. We know of a 12-year-old girl who had to have her leg amputated. So um, there is the value of their lives is equal. Um, they need to be protected, first and foremost, by all warring parties, um, and they need to be afforded the support that they need um, uh, to grow up and, and uh, if they are foreign to integrate their societies and if they are Syrians to participate in the uh, rebuilding of their own country. And of course, sadly, Joel, we're not seeing much protection from the warring parties. But is it likely that as a result of what we're seeing in Syria, more and more countries will consider a U-turn in their policies of taking these dual national children in? Um, there have been some repatriations. Some countries have stepped up, but it's not enough. Uh, there are more than uh, 11,000 uh, children left in uh, northeast Syria, and some of them have already been displaced now by the, the conflict. Uh, and in addition, since they live in camps, they rely completely on humanitarian aid. They do not have access to external resources outside of the camp. So uh, the only way for them to uh, be able to have normal lives, to be reintegrated into society, to be afforded the support, the social and psychosocial support they need, uh, is to go back to their countries of origin. Um, this area now is, uh, as you've been seeing and, and saying, uh, is uh, on the brink of a humanitarian catastrophe, and it's not in overstretched camps in northeast Syria that they can contemplate le leading normal lives. Lastly, and very briefly, Fikan Joel, can you tell us about the work that Save the Children is doing on the ground and what kind of assistance you need from the international community? 
Um, Save the Children has been in Northeast Syria since 2014, and at the forefront of our response is our uh, Syrian staff. Um, so far, we're still continuing our programs in the Northeast. Um, we're doing education protection programming with children. Um, we are present also in camps with foreign children. But uh, if access is not guaranteed and if the protection of humanitarian workers is not guaranteed by warring parties, uh, we will reach a point where it will be more and more difficult to help civilians in need, including the children. Joel Basul of Save the Children saying that, of course, the NGO needs more security to be able to access the area. Thank you so much for speaking to us here on Middle East Matters.